Welcome back to Chemisode, and this is on covalent molecules, and we're looking at the properties of covalent molecule, molecules. Covalent molecules. This property that we're looking at is melting points. So we've looked at the solubility for, melt, um, for covalent molecules. Now we're going on to melting points. And I'm trying to explain and try and get across that most of the stuff to do with covalent molecules is to do with the polarity of these covalent molecules. And most properties can be explained using the polarities um, of covalent molecules to explain them. Melting points is no different. Remember, right back at the start where I started looking at properties in part 3.1, we said that the melting points are generally low for covalent molecules. This is due to intermolecular forces being quite weak. So the forces between the two molecules being quite weak forces. Now these weak forces can be broken up into three different areas. So the intermolecular forces in covalent molecules, they're all weak, but we can rank them in terms of weakness, if you will. The three forces are here, dispersion and van der Waals forces. Okay? Dispersion or van der Waals forces occur between two non-polar substances. Now, because we've got non-polar substances, as you can imagine, there's no charge as such holding these things together. The only thing that holds these things together is a really split second imbalance in electrons because they're always flying around. We have a really split second imbalance in electrons. This is a very, very weak force. Dispersion forces and van der Waals forces are the weakest of the intermolecular forces. So non-polar substances generally have extremely low melting points and extremely low boiling points. Methane, for instance, is a gas at room temperature. So it's a very, very, very low melting point for methane. This is due to it being non-polar and only displaying dispersion forces. The interesting thing about dispersion forces is the only way to increase the dispersion force is to increase the molar, um, the um, molecular mass of your compound. The higher the molecular mass, the stronger force holding it together if it's non-polar. So that for non-polar things, the way to rank which one's going to have the highest melting point is to look at the size of the molar mass. That's for non-polar substances. Then we have two more types of intermolecular forces. One's called dipole-dipole force or a dipole-dipole bond. That's where we have an interaction between two polar substances. Now the interaction between two polar substances is a lot stronger than non-polar substances. So the interaction with dipole-dipole bonds is a lot stronger than the interaction between dispersion forces. This is due to the idea of dipoles where we have slight negatives and slight positives on your compounds here. Now, because they have slight negatives and slight positives, you get a more of an attraction between these molecules, so therefore you get a higher melting point. Um, H2S, uh, or hydrogen sulfide, dihydrogen sulfide, sorry, is a, I'm pretty sure it's still a gas at room temperature, but it's a very dense gas. It's a very, very heavy gas. That's because we have these two these interactions being stronger, these dipole-dipole bonds are holding the molecule together a bit better. At the top end of our intermolecular forces, even though all of these are quite weak, the strongest of the weak ones are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are dipole-dipole bonds with fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen involved, the FON molecules. Remember, hydrogen bonds are FON because we have fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen. These bonds are the strongest of our weak intermolecular forces. Dispersion, very, very small force, very low boiling point. Dipole-dipole between polar bonds, sorry, between polar molecules, a little bit higher, a fair bit higher actually, but then hydrogen bonds increases it even more so. If you can imagine, um, remember I said that this hydrogen, dihydrogen sulfide is a gas at room temperature, um, if you have dihydrogen monoxide, what you actually have is a liquid at room temperature. You've got, you've got water. So hydrogen bonds occur between fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. We end up having 
these types of bonds happening. So dispersion, non-polar, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen, both polar. Hydrogen occurs when you have fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen. Let's have a look at, oh, it's just um, color to show you that these are extremely weak. These are a bit more on the intense side. They're still overall very weak. They're a lot weaker than covalent bonds between the atoms in covalent molecules. And they're very a lot weaker than ionic bonds and a lot weaker than metallic bonds. But they are the reason we have um, variations in the melting points of our compounds. Let's have a look at an example and let's have a think about what we would expect to see, what type of bonding we would see in these um, molecules. First of all, what you need to do is quickly draw out these molecules and decide whether they're going to be polar or non-polar. Okay? If you just pause this podcast now, take some piece of paper out, take a piece of paper out and try and think about what at least these first five molecules will look like. Just quickly note down, draw their valence structures. So I'll give you a bit of a chance to write that down and then we'll get into looking at what type of intermolecular bonds we would expect to see in these molecules. Okay, you've had your time, you've paused the podcast, you've written down what you expect these guys to look like. Now let's look at what type of uh, molecule each one of these are, what type of bonds they would form. Now, this one here, chlor um, carbon tetrachloride, would display a weak dispersion force because if you drew this properly, you would see it has a tetrahedral arrangement of the chlorines around the carbon. You would have it all symmetrical and you would have no symmetry. Sorry, you would have it all symmetrical. It would have symmetry. It would be a non-polar compound. Carbon tetrachloride would be a non-polar compound, so therefore it has dispersion weak forces. If you manage to draw um, this guy called ethane or dicarbon um, hexahydride, you would get dispersion weak forces as well because this has symmetry within it. Okay, If you manage to draw this properly, you would see the symmetry in um, ethane and you would notice because we have symmetry, it's a non-polar substance and therefore we have dispersion forces. These three all have, sorry, all these four have no symmetry whatsoever. So all these four are polar substances. The difference between them though is what is in that polar substance. This polar substance has fluorine, one of our FON molecules. So therefore it has hydrogen bonds. This guy, um, hydrogen bromide, has dipole-dipole medium-sized um, intermolecular forces. Because it hasn't got one of those FON molecules, it only has dipole-dipole. Um, phosphorus trihydride, again, dipole-dipole because it hasn't got one of the FON molecules. Now, ethanol is this guy here. Ethanol has an OH group in it. This OH group is gives you an idea that it has hydrogen bonding happening with it. Because you have an OH, it tells you we have hydrogen bond. So the oxygen is one of our FON molecules, F-O-N, and that signifies hydrogen bonds. Looking at these two here, both have dispersion forces, both have weak dispersion forces. Which one would we expect to have the higher melting point? What would we expect within these two molecules which one would have a higher melting point? I'll let you think about it. If you need to, it's to do with the size, the molar mass of the compound. What we have is the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride is 158. The molar mass of ethane is only 30 grams per mole. So what we would have is this one would have a larger melting point or a larger boiling point than this one here. So remember, dispersion forces are non-polar and the size of the dispersion force depends on the mass of our molecule. 
Polar substances have dipole-dipole, and if you have a Fon molecule, it has this special type of dipole-dipole called hydrogen bonding. So that's how we deal with melting points in terms of our covalent molecules. Next up, we're going to look at different types of covalent molecules, but I'll save this to a new podcast, a new video. So we'll finish on polarity, and I'll just show you the last part here. This is the important slide where we have nonpolar substances, dispersion forces, polar substances, dipole-dipole. The special type of dipole-dipole um, is your hydrogen bond. So that's it, and I hope you get understand this. If you don't understand it, please send me an email. Tell me which part you don't understand, where the which um, which what's called what the time is where you can't understand it, and I can hopefully help you in class when we get to it. Or if you're watching this on your own and you don't understand it, send me an email. Tell me what time it is. I can try and walk you through it as well. So. Until next time, where we look at different types of um, covalent molecules or different types of covalent compounds, I should say, um, take it easy and see you later.